This conference will now be recorded. Welcome everyone. I'm Soumya and I'll be your host for this session. So before starting, I would request everyone to go on mute and if you'll have any questions throughout the session, you can send them through chatbot or you can unmute and ask. So let me introduce you to Tech Canvas first. So Tech Canvas is an IT certification training organization for professionals, wherein we help students to crack their certification exams in first attempt. Uh, being an authorized training center for IIBA Canada and ISQI Germany, we conduct all the IIBA certification courses like ECBA, CCBA, CBAP, and we also train people for Agile Analysis certification. And we are also authorized training partner of Project Management Institute, PMI, for all the project management related certifications. And uh, we also have domain courses into banking, finance, healthcare, and many more. So uh, today we will be discussing on the future of business analysis and we have with us Puneet Rastogi. So Puneet has over 13 years of experience as an IT business analyst in BFS industry. He is CBAP certified and he has worked with companies like ICICI Bank, EY and Macquarie Group. He has implemented multiple regulatory and management reporting projects with global clients and delivered uh, projects at various stages of their life cycle. So uh, welcome Puneet and from here I would request Puneet to take the session ahead. Thank you all for joining and I hope you all have a wonderful session. Over to you Puneet. Thank you Soumya. Um, so uh, welcome everyone. That's how I would want to start. Um, so this session for future of business analysis is primarily based on my research and my understanding of the industry and i would like to keep it light-hearted i would like to keep it more interactive we will play a little game in the middle um, in one of the slides so that we can learn from each other's experiences so whenever such a scenario comes up i would request you guys to please participate and uh, contribute to the session to make it fun and learning as well so let's start uh, how many of you recognize this picture that is a question for the group this is from the for those of you who don't know this is a trailer from the most recent spider-man film from marvel studios and columbia pictures um, if you don't know the background, I am not going to spoil it for you. So this is the material is from the trailer itself. What happens is in the previous film, uh, Spider-Man, whose real name is Peter Parker, wanted to keep his identity secret, but somebody outed him. And everybody knows and his life has gone topsy-turvy because of it. So he goes to somebody, another superhero called Doctor Strange, who's a proficient in magic, and says that I want everybody to forget that I am Spider-Man. Doctor Strange says, fine, I can do that for you. And he goes ahead. But what happens is when Doctor Strange explains that now everyone will forget, Peter Parker says, no, I want my friends to know. Then Doctor Strange modifies the spell again. Then he says, no, my, I want my girlfriend to know. He modifies the stray spell again. He says, don't do that. But he keeps insisting. And Peter again says, my aunt should know. And a few other times he keeps doing it. And eventually uh, the spell goes haywire and the reality itself shatters around them. Um, so now uh, why are we talking about this? What went wrong? Let's understand. I'll come to that answer on why are we talking about it. Um, Peter never asked exactly what would the spell do. He just stated that I want something that would make people forget that I'm Spider-Man. And Dr. Strange from his side did not really explain the final state of what would the spell actually do and what are the risks associated with the spell. And when Peter understood the risks and the final state, he kept bringing up afterthoughts. Oh, I want my friend to remember. I want my girlfriend to remember. I want my aunt to remember it. But even then, Dr. Strange did not stop to understand the exact need of what exactly does Peter want. He kept updating the spell as it went through. And Peter, of course, kept interrupting the spell and the entire 
process got messed up and Dr. Strange kept updating a live spell. He didn't stop. Okay, let's discuss this out first before we go ahead. And all of that, as a result, uh, all hell breaks loose. And that is why I say <clears throat> even superheroes need business analysts. If there was a business analyst in this position, he would understand, fine, exactly what is going wrong? What do you need, Peter? And what are what do you provide, Dr. Strange? And how can we bridge the gap? Okay, what are the risks associated? What is the exactly that Peter wants and the limitations, needs and expectations, etc. And a business analyst would have avoided the entire catastrophe that happened. So that is the kind of premise we're working on that no matter what happens, business analysts are always needed. Um, Soumya has already given an introduction about me, so I would rather skip over this slide, but I would just want to express that the views expressed here are my own and the opinions are also my own and not associated with any of my previous employers or the current one. Um, the agenda for the discussion today, um, who is a business analyst, who needs a business analyst, top challenges, is AI a threat? business analysis in a post-COVID world and sort of sort analysis or business analysis and to understand if there is a key mantra for success. Right, um, who is a business analyst? IIBA, the organization says by definition in their BA body of knowledge says that business analysis is the practice of enabling change in an organizational context by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. Anyone who performs business analysis activities is a business analyst. So there is no particular definition of a business analyst per se. There is a definition of business analysis and anybody who does that is a business analyst. So anybody who enables change, anybody who defines needs and recommends solutions around it by del and eventually delivers value is a business analyst. But the key thing that those are the key terms around business analyst or business analysis. But the key thing is a business analyst needs to know that a need of a business is more than the requirements. They would need let's say a login screen, but doesn't have to be, they, doesn't speci they don't specify if it is biometric, if it is retinal, if it's username and password, if it's OTP. So a need and a requirement are different. Requirements are subset of needs. Similarly, a solution to a problem may not always be a software or a software patch or a code, etc. It can be process based, it can be strategic, it can be tactical, organizational restructuring, anything. So a problem depending on a lot of factors would mean what the solution is, software or more. And finally, uh, the value expected from a problem or a solution is more than what is immediately obvious as an expectation. If the value derived from a login screen is an authentication or then the expectation is that yes, the person whoever is claiming to be is the one using the screen. But if the value is, if the expectation is to interact with the phone, the value add on that is an ease of use. So when you say if a phone developer wants to create a phone who anybody can use, the value for does not exist for somebody who's blind or somebody who's deaf maybe. How would you use a phone or how would you create a phone for somebody who's deaf? So those are the things that you define, drive or you define value as, whereas the expectation are a subset of that. Similarly, on those lines, anybody who understand these concepts and anybody who follows the IIBA definition of business analysis is a larger set of people with the designation of business analyst. You can grow in an organization and still have uh, a role of a business analyst. I hope these things are clear. 
Right. Continuing on this topic, who is a business analyst? I would rather want to ask. Yeah. And just a question. Sure. I can't see the name, but please go ahead. I'm Lisa. Uh, yeah. Just finished the feedback on course for tech analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, would like to take the CPAP exam as well, studying for it currently. Mm -hmm. just Can you just please be a bit louder? Yes, just wanted to ask. You uh, just now mentioned a business analyst can grow in an organization and still remain a business analyst. Uh -huh. uh, what does that exactly mean? Okay, let's go through this slide and then if I may ask, answer your yes, question. Sir. Yeah, yes, I think this slide will answer your question by yourself. So okay. like I said, uh, who is a business analyst? I would rather ask who does business analysis. It can be a business architect, business systems analyst, data analyst, management consultant, strategy consultant, etc., etc., etc. So the thing is, like I said, anybody who understands a problem, devises a solution, and adds value to the stakeholders, is a business analyst. You can be a business analyst for, um, let's say, a problem, software problem. You have a problem of, let's say, a product needs to be created, a software product needs to be created. You have a business, you talk to them, create documentation, BRDs, FRDs, and deliver that. But if you look at the BABOC per se, or if you look at the role of a business analyst, that also means there is something called like a chapter called a knowledge area called strategy analysis, uh, where you have at an organizational level where it is what it needs to be done. So, for example, when um, let's say Domino's came up with the idea of we want to optimize our pizza making process a few years ago and their delivery was getting delayed all the time and they were having no control over the delivery timelines and they were losing people because they kept waiting for a long time for their pizza. They started, they said that, no, we want to streamline everything and we want to know what can we do. So they asked for some consulting. I, I'm not really sure exactly what the process was, but eventually they ended up with the 30 minute rule that we will get you the pizza in 30 minutes and you will I mean, or you can get it for free. So the re the way that operational process was managed was also a business analysis activity uh, where you have a problem that business or dominoes does not have a standardized um, timeline of their processes or a delivery timeline for their pizzas and they need uh, something out that now on that the value was they got a marketing benefit that they were the first one to come up with the 30 minute rule they could have said that we could we can reduce from one hour let's say to 45 minutes and they would have been happy but their that was a requirement the val the need was to streamline and standardize the entire piece and that too with a quantifiable quantifiable guaranteed position of 30 minutes so that is the difference between requirement and value need and value etc and a management consultant or an operational consultant who did that was also a business analyst in that sense you understand the problem provide a solution add value you're a business analyst. And when a person grows into, let's say, a project management role or product manager role or SME or a strategy consultant or a management consultant, they still perform the role of a business analyst, even though their designation does not specifically say uh, that they are a business analyst. Does that make sense? Does that answer the question? Yes, Puneet. All right. So I think we can move forward. All right. Um, this is a slide where I would want you, everyone to play a game with me. Uh, I'll be showing you a picture that answers this question on who needs a business analyst. And I would want the people to come back with what can you infer from the picture. And if you have gone through the BABOC material or if you have gone through the role of a business analyst ever in your life for some time, you would know what I'm talking about. Right, what do you think this is? What's happening here and how does a business analyst help? You can share your answers on the chat board if you want. 
I think when there is misunderstanding between two teams like the management part and the technical part, it bridge it it build a bridge between those two. Exactly. Is conflict this is, and stakeholders. Yes, conflict is the right word. You're right. Uh, the previous answer was also correct, but the correct word or the technical word for this is conflict management. When people are not coming to an agreement, when somebody says, I I said this, you know, somebody else said, no, you said that, etc. That is where business analyst comes in, in conflict management between various stakeholders, individuals or teams. How about this one? Who wants to take a shot? Uh, finding the best way or the best strategy. Correct. When the organizations don't know how to achieve their goals, when they want to do something, but they don't know what how to do it, uh, they would want some a business analyst or a strategy person to understand how to get there. Like Domino's would say, or 30 minutes when you do a market research answer or when you have a cost problem, then what do you do, et cetera, in your business per se, then you bring in a business analyst. I kind of gave away this answer to this one. Anyone? Yes, budgeting. budgeting. Budgeting? Yes. Yes, so the answer for budgeting was correct. I mean, you have a limited budget or if you are overspending and you have kind of drained your wallet, the company has drained their wallet, they don't know how to fix that. That would be a role, that would be where a business analyst would step in and uh, improve their quality of delivery. Maybe in time, but if, when you are doing expenses, it can be time-based, resource-based, or actually budgeting a financial-based. In every manner, a business analyst can help. How about this one? This is simple. The software doesn't work, kind of like. When people don't know, they have a problem with their system, their system is outdated, it doesn't meet their functionality, etc. This is specific to software. When they don't know what to do and how to improve on their processes, they would need a business analyst to understand what is the current trend in the industry, both on a technical and the business, le business level, or what is, uh, what is going wrong. This is somewhere the business analyst can definitely help. This one is tricky. Overwhelmed with uh, information or management of task. Mm -hmm. Close. Too many resources of information, too much information. Yeah, I kind of guess that when I chose this. This actually, I wanted to say a prioritization. When people have so much work that they don't know what and limited resource to deliver them, uh, that is where they get overloaded with information. So the reason why people get overloaded with information or task is when they can't prioritize what needs to be done first. Everybody is priority or nothing is priority at all. They pick randomly in case, let's say we have dependency when, a trace, when we build a traceability mat matrix, we have dependency as well. That is also included here um, when you prioritize things. So without prioritizations, this is what would happen. And that is where you would need a business analyst. And the last one. Solution Finalizing is the solution. Yeah. Fitting. Find the right fit. Finding the right yeah, fit, same. yes. Oh, finding the right <laughs> fit or finding the right solution for you. So you 
a lot of companies out there are doing patchwork of work. Uh, I can do this, I can not do that. I can do this way and that way. You go for a cloud or you go for an in-house solution or a desktop-based solution, but your solution needs to go outside as in on a customer level, then you don't do that. Today, people have smart devices, but they have to carry their laptops. That makes it cumbersome. So the solution is not on mobile-based solution or app-based solution. That is a problem. So even though the solution works, it's not the right fit. It's not the right solution that is solving the problem or delivering the value. So that is what I wanted here. So a business analyst would come in and understand the actual need or a value discrepancy and then present or improve the way things are working. So any of these six scenarios and more is where a company or a project or an organization would need a business analyst. Any questions? All right. I'll need to pick up the pace, I think. Yeah. Uh, top challenges to business analysis. What is out there uh, across which are presenting challenges to business analysis? When organizations think that we can do this ourselves and we know what we want, this include this means that they don't hire business analysts as a role. It's not that if they hire business analysts or people who are doing business analysis, that is something, this challenge is not applicable to that. When people have the business, they hire a developer vendor, development vendor, or a solution vendor, and then they go ahead. This is what I want, get it done. Uh, it's not always the right fit. And that is a challenge to business analysis. These people, I mean, it pains me to see when this happens, personally speaking. Um, when vendors provide bite-side solutions or the organizations are too volatile, they want to do big data, they want to do AI, they want to do machine learning, they, they see this jargons and people are throwing jargons at them and they're happy to do it, but they don't really know what exactly will solve their problem is something that as a challenge to business analysis as well. Um, the fact that BA techniques are easy to grasp and develop, but there is no BA skill. Uh, can anybody suggest what are the BA skills or competencies? We can have technical and a soft skill like communication and soft skill and Mm -hmm. Technical, we can say analytical, analytical uh, thinking and all. Mm -hmm. Elicitation. Elicitation, yes. Time management. One of the key, and... one of the key things that I have heard of uh, our research that stands apart, and even IIBA agrees to this. Communication, analytical problem solving. Okay, yeah. Is basically relationship building and being empathic to business to understand like the difference between needs and what is what are they saying and what do they actually want? Uh, that is one of the things. Of course, the answers that are given so far are all correct. Uh, communication, elicitation, and uh, relational uh, technical skills, business skills, analytical skills, etc. of course. And those are the things basically. So like I said, a lot of these things, if you talk about even elicitation, for example, AI does elicitation right now. When these law documents are being read and summaries are being generated by that. When you have uh, technical skills, anybody can learn to code and they can actually grow and become a technical expert. But business skills, you go a business side and core business or core finance or core, uh, core FMCG and then you would get that. There would be a lot of BA techniques that are easy to grasp and develop, but the core BA, BA skill of having being a bridge to all of these points is uh, difficult. But the fact that these techniques or these uh, expertise are easy to grasp is a challenge to business analysis in the modern world. Then there are vendors who are happy to say that we'll, solve, we'll uh, implement this. It's, if it's not working, we'll provide the fix. Okay, your login screen is not working. Okay, your app is not working. It's not working for 2 GB RAM, it's working for 4 GB RAM. So let's fix it for 2 GB RAM. But that is, not, that is unlimited fixes, but that is not add stakeholder value. This is, this is like uh, healing a fracture with band-aids, lots and lots of band-aids, instead of using a plaster or uh, a healing process with a doctor. So that is a challenge of business analysis when 
like a business analyst would rather look at the bigger picture, understand what is actually needed, and then provide that. If you do unlimited fixes, it doesn't work that way, right way. Or if you have, from business analyst perspective, what is wrong with business analysts themselves? That people don't really have industry knowledge. They jump from industry to industry, not really knowing a lot of things, or they actually don't have any structured way of doing this. When you have, the, like CBAP or IIBA says that there is a structured way. You understand the stakeholders, devise stakeholder persona, then talk to the right people, understand the right requirements, confirm them, and then you do their engineering and delivery. That is kind of like the structured way of doing business analysis. But when you don't follow that kind of pattern and don't follow some of the key steps in that, that is unstructured business analysis. And that is a challenge to good quality business analysis, in my opinion as well. Right. Um, when I mentioned that AI can do the elicitation that way, is does that make AI a threat to the BA? To that, I'll reference something from the movie iRobot. I'm a big movie buff. So in that, the lead character, Del Spooner, asks who doesn't believe in robots and AIs, and he's not a sympathetic person, would ask, can a robot write a symphony? Can a robot turn a canvas into a beautiful masterpiece? Sony, the robot, who's completely on AI, asks him back, can you? So when you ask somebody that how a business analyst or a th AI, can AI be a threat to a BA? You have to ask yourself, are you a BA yourself? You have to understand what a BA does, like structured business analysis that I talked about. Uh, just because AI can does not mean AI should. Like I said, uh, if you AI would, may not be able to understand as of now. I mean, when we talk of AI, it is only the current state. We don't know what would AI be able to achieve in say 20 years from now. But as of now, uh, AI can read documents, BRDs, and maybe then understand what is a business requirement out of that. But like I said, uh, if they want interaction with phone in the requirement, does if you tell them interaction with phone, AI would never come back, come up with a concept of touchscreen from a keypad. That is something that a business analyst would do. Then if somebody wants, what is the value that they want, want, they would want, a user would want, pressing keys or touching the screen. When you rotate your screen, the photos should rotate. Would an AI come up with that? Maybe not right now. Let's see. Um, how do we understand or how do we step ahead of AI from this. We have the behavioral skill. We understand what is a pain point from our experience. We understand what we have, um, what the business needs. We build stakeholder relationships. We have challenges. We try to overcome them from one way or the other. So those are the behavioral skills that set us apart from a machine for now. And we should rather focus on them. And we stay ahead of the curve. We stay ahead of the fact that there is uh, let's say a legal AI, which can read uh, legal documents and then build an argument. So we understand that we, if there is an AI that builds on BRDs, you write better BRDs so that the AI would be, it's easy for the AI to do that, or you can add value, which an AI wouldn't. Um, remember that AI is an ally and it can be used to improve BA techniques. Um, anybody has any inputs on this? What do you think? Is this correct? Or is there a point to this? Or is it not right? Counter arguments? All right, let's see that. Um, AI can help you with document elicitation, maybe. It is an ally. It can help you with automating things. It can help you with automating processes as an output. You can use it as a solution. You can use it in your research, engineering, at any level. You can always use it to improve BA techniques. We can have a scribe. You can record a conversation and the AI or a bot can actually uh, write it for you or make a entire document out of just using the audio. It is a resource and can build great solutions. RPA, for example, is when you understand that when you have somebody who does a lot of things, you automate that, that is a solution that you can provide. So it is a resource that can build great solutions. But having said that, 
AI can also be a liability if not done correctly. Case in point, IBM has sold their Watson Health Department recently, the unit for Watson. Business analysis in a post-COVID world. Um, I don't know how, how many of you were in core business analysis or had a substantial experience of business analysis pre-COVID, pre-20 November 2019. But I guess uh, what has changed ever since then is that there are solutions that need to be redesigned for contactless usage. Everything is becoming contactless and the role of a business analyst is important in that, that they don't want to lose their value. They would rather, they would rather when the clients would rather be contactless and be proud of that as an added value. So anything that you said that you have to press keys on an ATM, for example, let's make that contactless. Can you make that contactless? A PA would have to come up with an idea around it. And on top of that, automation has also gained priority. Automate, we don't want to be dependent on people. If somebody gets sick, if somebody is not available, if you are working from home, if the network doesn't work. So all of those things, automate as much as possible. Stakeholder engagement has become challenging with everybody working from home or working from different cities, different locations, and even different countries for that matter. Catch-ups have turned into meetings. Personally, this has this has affected me the most. Something that I could do at walk up to somebody, have a five-minute conversation and come back. Now I have to book a 15 or 30-minute slot with them. And that way, my calendar, which was usually 20 or 30% full, and most rest of the time I could do my own work, is now mostly 80% full. Although the conversations are the equal value. And we can't ignore the great resignation. Um, attrition has been high in the last year or so or maybe some time and that means a volatile stakeholder list somebody you knew who had you had a great rapport with has now moved to a different organizations and you have to maybe start from scratch and building that relationship so that is something that is change changing as well some techniques have become more difficult like workshops and maybe brainstorming has become more difficult because it is, like I said, because of catch-ups turning into meetings and calendars getting overbooked, you don't find time for all the right stakeholders at the same time. And that is why one of those, some of those techniques have become more difficult. And now from a project perspective, an agile way is more preferred than waterfall because waterfall is taking a longer time than it used to before and it is becoming even more difficult. Uh, across an industry, you might have uh, some exceptions here and there, but across the industry, people who were more relying on waterfall in terms of a global environment maybe are now more preferred to an agile way where they can quickly change things depending on what they recently learned. But what can a business analyst do on these problems per se, specifically? Be open for your new user experience ideas. You have to understand how can you make something contactless? How can you make something automated? If there can be something that you can do from remote locations, like a bank doesn't have to actually, even a bank doesn't have to the customer or the customer doesn't have to come to the bank. And if they do, how would they interact with people? How would they interact with systems, making it more contactless and more contactless? Um, process improvement is still important when you have an automation. It's not just an automation that you should go for. You should look at better way of doing things, faster way of doing things. But remember that RPA or robotics process automation is here to stay. That is an ally. You need to use it as part, consider it as part of the solutions that you provide um, on problems on process level. Um, Build relationships, not network with stakeholder engagement. If you are building with a particular person, you would want that relationship to continue beyond the organization. And if somebody is coming in new, you start with the relationship before you go on more of a cordial or a cordial uh, relationship with that person that I am a business analyst, you are an SME, etc. And for catch-ups turning into meetings, I think the best way to do it is have better use of time by sending crisper communications and having efficient meetings. Uh, some of some of the people that I have talked to have actually started 
a rule by themselves and sometimes motivated by their organizations that when you send a 30 minute invitation, try to have a 20 minute meeting. So that is a kind of approach that people might take. Stakeholder personas re-emerge from oblivion. When you have um, a person, the stakeholder personas is something that I have not seen many people use uh, in my experience, but if there is a new person coming in at a new location or a new role or an old role, you actually understand that person, you understand their behavior, their attitude, their personalities, and build around that so that you can have that influence and impact level uh, understanding of them. Of their roles. Um, the solution to having techniques becoming more difficult is to blur the lines and bend the rules. When you have a bunch of people together, doesn't matter if you're having a workshop or a brainstorming session. When you have one person, you can have one person to have an interview, or you can have 10 people at different times filling up a common questionnaire. And that questionnaire can be your brainstorming session. So although like Blur the lines. You don't have to follow one particular approach in the particular way. So spread your wings and understand how to do with things when whatever the challenge and you kind of improve on that. And when methodologies change, when strategies change, when companies culture change or techniques change, you keep upskilling yourself. When there are new things coming in, just improvise, adapt and overcome. Any questions so far, especially on this slide? I'll take that as a no. Right, SWOT analysis of our business analysis. I think I used analysis. Strengths, um, we like, uh, there is a relationship building requirement. There is something we like to do with technical and business acumen. We like to hold that technical business acumen. Lifelong, we are lifelong learners. And we provide, like a, a lot of people said, analytical thinking and problem solving. That is something that not all roles provide. But our weaknesses are sometimes we include personal biases. We uh, kind of understand and judge a person by their initial meeting or the initial resistance to change, etc. But maybe they have more value to add, or maybe there is a way we can work around. But personal biases remain our weakness. We have uh as business analysts we sometimes have tendency to quickly suggest solutions based on our expertise based on our experience but maybe the maybe the closest door is right behind you not in front of you like they say in aeroplanes uh, so you need to take some time and understand what exactly is the problem and how best to do it maybe it's not the knee-jerk reaction that is there weaknesses um sometimes when things go wrong we post back to blame that this went wrong and this did not go right instead of proactive transparency of what is something that you look at things as they are and then before things go wrong you will kind of understand and mitigate that risk that is something that uh, business analysts tend to do as well opportunities for business analysts is that we have a, we live now in a very dynamic world more dynamic than ever but that brings us dynamic needs that we can capitalize on ICT technologies, information and communication technologies enable better communications. We can see people more, even though, uh, like if you had a meeting cross geographical meeting previously, it, people would be reluctant to join in or people would be reluctant to maybe show their faces, etc. But I think it's more natural now. People are comfortable that if you request them, they would prepare for it. They may, not, they may not be always in a formal best, presentable best all the time, but it would definitely is getting better. People are getting more comfortable with it. Uh, there are no limits to career paths. New roles keep coming up. You just have to understand what is needed and what can you do to help solve a problem better. And an ever-changing digital world brings everlasting opportunities. You understand the new technologies that are coming in. Do you understand how can you leverage that in solving different problems that you have? 
but that also brings a threat that you have an unpredictable environment you don't know what is happening in the future you don't know if there is a new covid wave coming you don't know if the person you're going to a meeting with tomorrow uh, you get a goodbye mail from him on the by the end of the evening so i don't know i mean business analysts wouldn't really know how predictable the environment is uh, there are always makeshift analysis uh, business analysts so a developer comes up and says i'll gather the requirement and gathers the requirement in whatever best way they can but that doesn't really solve the problem but it is a threat misconceptions about values from plug and play solutions everybody wants to do a startup without really understanding the problem that they want to do solve so they provide plug and play solutions as well they kind of mess up things more often than not and more than they can solve the problems of so what exactly is the value these plug and play solutions provide people don't really understand that and let me be clear i'm not demeaning anything here but there is a, these are the challenges that uh, they would i have seen from the industry right now and of course there are better things around this but um, this is something that i have understood as threats to business analysts where when these things happen there are uh, business analysts can go wrong or if the right approaches are not used uh, the problem doesn't really get solved and the value doesn't really get delivered around this. So there are, of course, uh, makeshift sure business analysts sometimes do wonderful things. Sometimes the plug and play solutions are the right fit for a problem. So I'm not generalizing anything here, but these are the threats that uh, for a business analyst or the business analysis process, these are the th threats that can uh, hamper the process, uh, hamper the progress, hamper the delivery, hamper the quality, etc. Any questions or disagreements? Hi, Puneet. Abhilash here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Abhilash. Yeah. I wanted to ask. So, sub in the first slide, you said that uh, a business analyst can perform the activity of business analysis in any kind of role. Right, mm -hmm. but suppose if as a person I enjoy the business and the designation of business analyst more, and I do not like mm -hmm. to go further and be a product manager or say project manager because I don't like management. So a person mm -hmm. can choose to be a business analyst as a designation for say 10, 15, 20 years, or it would be a very bad thing to be on the resume to be a business analyst for say 15, 20 years. No, I don't think that is a bad thing, Abhilash. Um, okay. Both from my experience and I mean, I have in my I mean, in my career personally, I have uh, been on both sides of the table. I have been a stakeholder and I have been a business analyst. But as a stakeholder, like when I say I have 13 years of business analyst experience, is because even as a stakeholder or even as a person, I was actually solving problems and adding values, etc. So when yeah. we, I talk to somebody, when I see somebody who says that I have 15 years of experience, I put that, that stakeholder hat of mine and say that that is a very good thing. So that person knows what exactly can go wrong and mm -hmm. like when i said that tendency to quickly suggest solution a 15 year experienced business analyst will not have that we yeah. i am expecting that business analyst to have more in-depth understanding of the business and more understanding of when i implement let's go cloud you will say hold on let's understand what exactly is a problem and maybe we cannot go cloud let's go mobile let's go big data that's a, those are knee-jerk reactions, but a mature and seasoned business analyst would know what exactly can go wrong. So if you have built a niche in the skill or an industry, etc., it basically uh, it becomes a selling point. A 13-year experience or as a business analyst may not be mm -hmm. such a bad thing. Okay, and I also wanted to ask how necessary it is for a business analyst to know, you know, the technical part of the solution, such as say cloud or AWS or big data or so to a, does the business analyst need to know this side also or if they are a proper business analyst role as you know we read in IIBA books or everything so that much is enough for a person to be a good business analyst. Okay um, I think it's uh, a yes and no yes in the hmm. sense you should know what is big data 
but you yeah. may not need to know what the big how to do that that's the what that you need to understand not the how maybe okay the okay. how is of course beneficial if you know what big data can do then you would mm -hmm. be able to provide a solution around it that maybe big data is the right way to go ahead if you know iot is the right what does an iot mean and how do you implement it who are the best people around these things or what is the skill needed for a vendor or a in-house purchase or this um, resourcing or hiring around that that would help as well uh, you can always go for a certification that is definitely there if you think that maybe a lot of companies are uh, looking for somebody who has that bridge that understanding of both business analysis and let's say big data or rpa for example then yeah. you go for that certification or if you are have a hobby or if you think that is the right move for your career please go ahead but to answer your question i think knowing what these technologies are is and then deciding your career path is better and when you know them you would be able to dig deep when the opportunity comes to you so if for example if there is a lot of data that needs to be analyzed uh, there is a if there is a opportunity in twitter for example if you want to do or then elections coming in and you want to analyze uh, exit polls etc then you would know that i go want to go into unstructured data because uh, there is concept of data structured data and unstructured data and big data is good in unstructured data so a solution to this would be big data if you know that then you go to big data way and i think that should be sufficient if you are focusing only on your big data uh, sorry business analysis skills i think that's that's my opinion I hope that answers your question. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Puneet. Uh, right. Puneet, uh, what yeah. is yeah, what's the comparative difference between roles and responsibilities of a uh, junior and a senior BA? Okay. Uh, um, I think I'll build on the answer I gave to Abhilash. It's more about learning the knee-jerk reaction. So, for example, um, let's say if you build an application for uh, customers in fact customer banking right you build an application for customer banking and you understand that there is a need for a mobile app but and then the next project comes in and they say that they want to build an application for general general ledger updates for the within the bank the a junior business analyst who doesn't have that much seasoning or uh, the who is not that polished would say that let's build an app for that as well but maybe an app is not the right solution because of the threat security threats to mobile phones uh, when you have a general ledger data which is very extremely confidential to the bank you would want a limited set of users to even see the data or have access to the application so you wouldn't really go with a business uh, an app per se so you would go with an application which can even be installed on the desktop you don't need a thick client a thin client you go with a thick client that is an opinion that a senior business analyst would do have that what are the factors that would go in in developing a customer facing app to a secure app or more secure app so or a solution not an app solution a customer facing solution versus a secure solution so a business senior business analyst would say see these are the things that we will have to focus on this particular problem we, we cannot just randomly pick an app we pick on any technology that we first thing that we lay our eyes on so to answer your question i think that is something that is the difference between a senior versus a junior business analyst and of course then there is a guidance mentoring team building also uh, managerial processes of course around that as well yes Pani, thank you hello i have a right. question also yes please my question is uh, more based on the technical things uh, i would like to know like as a business analyst when is good to go for a senior position or to go in a uh, freelance mode okay um i think a senior position um is when you have more autonomy in your role proven that you can take decisions which add value without much risk and when you can do the activities of let's say conflict management stakeholder management prioritizations basically cultural issues of an organization 
if you can overcome that autonomy uh, by yourself or by mentoring others who are struggling with it then you know that you are ready for the next step because i think even if you are uh, let's say you don't have you don't give knee jerk reactions but uh, you understand all the aspects of it and your deliveries are foolproof and your deliveries are okay manju i will come back to it maybe if you can speak after i'm finished this question i think that would be better uh so to come to that uh for the f does that answer your first part that when to move to a senior position yeah 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 it's awesome. yeah okay uh for the freelancing bit i think it's more economical and more cultural of the geography that you're looking for for example uh at my current firm i am interacting with a free, lot of freelancing business analysts from australia but in india we don't have a freelancing culture of business analyst per se right now so i i don't think i'm in the right position to answer that question for you i'm sorry about that it's okay no problem thank you yeah um and manju can you if, yeah uh, okay i will pose i will ask another question that may be also in the same in, in a different way like if i want to open my consulting thing in ba mm -hmm. shall i be mm -hmm. a senior or, or how many more experience did i need i um i don't think that is an answer for me to give to you I don't think because that is something that you would have to take the leap of faith. Leap of faith, yeah. You have to take that leap of faith that you are ready to when a customer. So basically, the difference between a payroll BA, BA and a freelancing BA is basically when customer would want a reason to not pay you when you are an employee. They need a reason to not pay you. So you unless you mess it up really badly they you will get your pay and you will get the worth of your time but when you are a consultant you would the customer needs a reason to pay you so if you can give them a reason to pay you well enough that you are asking for it when your quality is good enough when their your work is good enough when you are you can handle every six months or every few days you have a new set of business you have a new set of company that you work for and you still quickly grasp the culture quickly grasp the stakeholders quickly grasp the problem the technologies solution without a knee jerk reaction of course that doesn't i mean you don't say something that you are going to say oh i was wrong that time if you don't do that then i think you're ready for anything on a personal level um but yeah of course uh, it's more about the culture as well you have to consider external factors uh, as well on that so those are i think something that i cannot comment on but yeah for a freelancing consultant uh, ba versus uh, an employee ba i think that is the answer that i have okay, thank you yes so I, mean, I think that will we'll do that uh there's a this last slide left is there a key mantra i think we've covered for most of these things uh they say that you have to keep upgrading and upskilling you have to ensure your transparency with stakeholders that this is what i do and this is uh as in on a business analysis when you say the post facto blame that comes goes wrong you have to be transparent these are the requirements are they correct this person said that this is the document is more appropriate the prioritization list the rec matrix etc keep improving on the reliability on documents and the quality of documents to ensure transparency look out for better way of doing things in a dynamic world keep uh, understanding that i don't like i don't believe in ai when a business analyst says i don't believe in ai that is not the right way to do you understand what an ai does and then you use it as a better way of doing things and think out of the box whenever possible when you have a keystroke versus a touch screen etc for example uh with that i conclude my uh presentation i saw a couple of questions which are on chat i'm not sure how to see those uh, uh if Somewhere you want you i can read to... those questions out yeah yes please. yes please so one question is uh from sunu he says that ba should know programming skills like python r etc okay i wouldn't specifically go for python and are in the answer 
but uh, BA should know programming skills if you are in that role, yes. If you are a strategic consultant, for example, you may not really need that. Uh, it's better advantage. I, have, I am a firm believer in learning algorithms, not technologies. Uh, you understand algorithms when uh, you, any algorithm, just plain simple English. If you can write a solution in plain simple English in an algorithm, like how do you write, uh, how do you open a Word document from a closed laptop? If that is a question, you write an algorithm of what needs to be done with all the if cases and all the exceptions and all these things, uh, then you are writing a good solution. But that is also what a business analyst does, that it, he makes sure that the problem has a solution, whatever may that be. And technology is, if you stick to one technology, I think that becomes a hamperer more than an enabler. Uh, because once you under have this knack of solving problems, regardless of the technology, then you are a good person or a good BA, in my opinion. Samia, next one, please, if that answers the question. Okay, uh, so Manju asks, any suggestions on Salesforce BA? Is it relatively easy and less hectic compared to actual BA? I don't think any BA or any technology BA is less hectic or easier than the other. It's a problem which can be more easier or the other. So uh, let's say fixing a bug is easier than implementing a project, but maybe that bug turns out to be an infestation. So then your life is more difficult than you can imagine. Yeah. Next one, please. Okay. Uh, if you have, asked, if we are, uh, yeah. sorry, some. If anybody yeah. has asked a question and uh, you are not satisfied with my answer, please ping again. So maybe we can come back to it. Yeah, Venkat asks. Yeah, for a BA is domain experience a must have? L CBAP kind of certification and exposure to body of knowledge works. So that's a question. Okay, um, I that is, two part question, I believe. Um, one is when you start off as a BA uh, in your career in a particular position, no, it is not required to have a, a good uh, a domain knowledge. You gain domain knowledge on the fly. There's a difference between a junior BA and a senior BA. When you are happy to learn, learning skills are also important. But when you're doing a career shift, for example, if you're doing from a financial BA to a construction or a manufacturing BA, for example, then you have to showcase your BA skills more than your domain knowledge. If you have to showcase, I believe that you have more understanding of how to solve a logistical problem or how to solve a software problem or have you done prototyping? Have you, uh, like for example, an example of prototyping, when I was doing CBAP, uh, my trainer got stuck of how, what to give an example of prototyping since we were coming from a bank i said uh, maybe real estate can give you a better example where you have a sample flat ready for a before you make a sale you show them a sample flat and how living in that sample flat would be and the customer then understands that what are they getting when they make that purchase so when you have this bridge between industries in your skill and you can show that bridge that you can be that bridge when you bring that experience of bfs into let's say manufacturing then domain knowledge is not that important I hope that answers it. Next one, please. Okay, next question is, can a person with 11 plus years experience in operations in investment banking can transition his career as BA? What certificate is required? Okay, um, I think uh, as a BA, you can, uh, you may not be a business, you may not, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a person of authority to say that. You may not be a business analyst, but you can always do business analysis. And a certification of CBAP or any other BA certification around it uh, can definitely help you in actually structuring your thoughts and approach. Uh, more than being a professional qualification. I think it's more, an, if you use that as more of an academic qualification to learn new things, I think you will be able to do business analysis better in whatever designation that you get into. Even an operational manager uh, solves a lot of problems, I believe. So um, yeah, you can be a BA, 
be a BA uh, at any point of time in your career by doing business analysis, not exactly by doing getting the designation of a business analyst. Um, so uh, how are we on doing on time? How many questions do you want to take? And it's up to you now. Um, I can go on. So uh, here I can see some four questions. So let's cover these yeah. four at least. Yeah. Sure. So next is what is roadmap for uh, career growth? So I hope this is in business analysis. The question seems a bit incomplete. For a career growth uh, in business analysis, maybe yeah. So yeah. Don't, if you are there, if you can ask that question, you can unmute and ask. We'll take the next one. Meanwhile, while Sidhu yeah. comes in. So next question is how to bring the balance between IIBA suggested best practices versus actual world work culture. Ah, very interesting. Um, I, I think the best way to do it, like I said, uh, bend the rules and bridge, uh, bridge the gap. What was the point that I, what is the example that I used? Uh, bend the rules and uh, identify better way, improvise, adapt, and overcome. So like I said, uh, real world is very different from when I started my career from. So, or any much of us maybe have started our career from the real world now is very different you understand what works it's situation the situation like i gave an example a mobile app works on a customer way and not a secure environment so best practices like i iib also claims that they are best practices it uh, it depends on uh, what is the problem and it depends on what is the solution that can you can provide the iba tells you how to do it and what can go wrong maybe for example if you don't have a stakeholder persona you don't know who's a project sponsor you don't know who is a person of authority if you don't know who's a person of influence and impact you wouldn't know how to get over a, a, maybe a cultural blockade when somebody doesn't want to do the business analysis work or deliver to business analyst uh, you wouldn't know how to get past that person and get your work done if you don't follow what iiba says but if you know a better way of doing it if you know that taking them out for a coffee would do please go ahead iba will not never tell you to take you out take somebody out for a coffee but if you think that works please go ahead and do it so that is my answer for that i hope that works yes samia so next question is how can we structureize or formalize business analysis in agile project in bracket it says azure devops structureize structure sorry Structurize or formalize business analysis in agile project. Ah, uh, I've I not it's really specific to Azure DevOps. That's what's mentioned in the bracket. Yeah, I am not an expert on that, so I will not be able to specifically suggest anything about Azure DevOps. But agile, yes. Uh, I have experienced uh, a challenging uh, project where uh, Agile was followed and business analysts were kind of at a loss themselves on what needs to be done. I think the uh, better way of doing it is keep transparency, like I mentioned, uh, keep uh, things transparent between stakeholders. You said that this is what you agreed on and this is what we are going to do. Because I think in an Agile world, there is a risk uh, on my experience, there is a risk of scope creep where one sprint can overlap into the other uh, or a new thing comes up on priority. So the prioritization becomes a challenge. I think there are a few things we can get into the de details and it will go on. But I think uh, personally, more transparency and uh, more putting your foot down that this is the process that we are going to follow. Please agree to it and you identify people who are of influence who can say yes we agree and anybody who disagrees with it please take it up with the person of influence and stuff so i think uh, that can be an approach of course there can always be a better diplomatic approach in that uh, it depends on scenario to scenario and culture to culture in my opinion as your devops i'm sorry i can't really help with that 
anything else so, from you yeah last question is being cbap is there any other advanced learning into ba that i can opt for please suggest so may can you answer that please <laughs> I I'm not really aware of any unless I mean um, I think there might be a couple of uh, different ones uh, like IIBA there are other organizations uh, who provide BA certifications uh, but again I think academic qualifications or professional certifications are maybe of the you have the similar value from all of them depending on what they are what how it was demanded etc etc i mean the factors that you have for pmp certifications or sprint planning certification or product management certifications the core pros and cons are the same with cbap i believe so I, mean, I think you can answer that as well i think you have answered it uh, correctly pudith sure. so uh, do we have any other questions Hi, this is Anand. Uh, um, I have a question about this specific slide about these batches. Uh, uh, my yeah. question is: Is the is the are these courses by Tech Canvas also provides the PDUs the required PDUs to take the exam? Yes. So these courses will be covering the PDUs that are required to take the exam. Okay. Thank you. And well, I have a follow up question. In order to register, can I call or should I email? So you can directly go to the website and register if you want to directly enroll. So you can find the option to enroll. Or if you have any other queries and you know you want some clarifications, you can directly get in touch with the contact number provided or the email IDs. Sure. Okay, then uh, I'll check. I'll check the website. Thank you. Sure. Yes. And if you enroll by 31st, you'll be getting an early bird discount. So because our batches are going to start from February, as mentioned, as per the dates. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. So thank you, everyone. I think uh, this was a very insightful session. Thank you, Puneet. And thank you all for joining. Hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>